made a video in the past. Uh, I showed all the different levels around the engine. Uh, a lot of you guys asked me that you want to see the whole engine room and for me to point out some of the major things that we're looking at. So this video, we're gonna do that. We're gonna look around the whole engine room. I'll do a voiceover because it's loud because I can't obviously talk in the engine room. So we'll do a voiceover as we edit the video. So let's go start from the top and work our way down. Okay guys, we're starting the tour here. Uh, these are the reefer compressors here for the provision reefers. That's where we store our food, the freezer box, the vegetable box. And there's two compressors there uh, for that. So there's a very important piece of equipment. We're looking down from above here at the main engine. It's an eight cylinder RT flex engine. Slow speed Salzer diesel. So we're gonna head down here and start on this level first. The racks on the right, the orange racks, they can be placed just to the left of those yellow and black stripes. And one of the deck plates gets removed. Then you can sit the piston on it allowing the, the piston rod to hang down below decks if you're doing a piston pull job. It can be staged and ready. So those racks are to hold the pistons if you had to do that. We're just looking up here at the exhaust valves. Here's the spare exhaust valve, complete unit, uh, head with the exhaust valve on it. And to the left here is a spare cylinder liner. It's not really dirty, that's just a protective coating called Cosmoline to protect from surface rust, things like that, contaminants. It's another exhaust valve and a spare piston. There's the piston crown, you can look down and you'll see that it hangs pretty far below the decks. The rod hangs all the way down. We'll see the lower half of that later in the tour. Just to my left is a brand new spare main engine double pump. We just hung it there not too long ago. Some uh, spare boxes with parts in them. This is the after, number two, auxiliary blower. There are two of them. That's the after one. We're passing the after turbo now. Uh, controllers for the auxiliary blowers we just passed. And this is the, the boiler room here. Controller for the boiler. There's the, the boiler registry, the lower end of the boiler. And you can see up there, it goes up. The gauge, glass, water columns are all up there. And that's a look there at the forward number one turbo, the silver unit, and the forward auxiliary blower. We saw the after one just a minute ago. This unit is the cylinder lubricators. It provides lubrication to the cylinder liners on all eight cylinders. There's little quills all over the liners you can see and that provides lubrication for those. So we're passing the number one, which is the forward turbo. And there it is. Okay, so just over here, now on the forward end of the engine, these are spare exhaust valves. One of them is being uh, held there, the forward overhead crane has got the hooks on it. There's another cylinder liner without the Cosmoline that we saw in the one just aft. You can see how shiny that looks without it. All right, so this is uh, the upper engine room level here. That's the MSD unit, marine sewage uh, treatment plant. This is just a, a water aquifer pressure tank for water. Uh, they keep it pressurized with air and uh, there's water pumps there. This is just a little mist pump to the right, a little water mist. Okay, we're looking at the main engine fuel booster pumps, the two cylindrical silver units right uh, just forward. Those are the heaters for fuel. And to my left now are the two main engine fuel pumps there. And there are strainers on the suction side of those pumps, which periodically get changed. There's a little toolbox there. Let's just take another look here. This is the purifier room where we're at right now. Okay, the four units here, we have four main engine fuel purifiers. These four large units right here, the green units. This is the fuel B&K auto flush filter. They have strainers in there, little filters, and it auto flushes periodically. And that's the last fuel purifier. 
This is a sludge purifier, which we really don't use that. This is a main engine Lubo purifier right here. And the little siblings are the generator Lubo purifiers. We have two of those. Okay, moving into the starboard generator room. You can see two generators, diesel generators. But this is the jacket water heater. We need that for import. That keeps the engine warm. And this is the distiller or evaporator or desalinization plant. And that's how we make our fresh water for the ship. Drinking water, potable water we call it, for showers, uh, out of seawater. Okay, now we're looking back at the number three and number four ship service diesel generators. They're nine cylinder diesel generators. Uh, and the generator end is what we're looking at right here. They're nine cylinder uh, diesel engines. Okay, so we're going to walk forward here, which is actually aft. You can see the, the mist detectors there. And this is a pre-lube pump for the diesel generator. And this is the air cooler. Behind that cover is the air cooler. Just like we saw in the main engine, the air cooler just below the turbos. Same thing here, just different configuration. Another look at it right there from the other side, and there is the turbo right there. Of course, the exhaust going up and out the stack, and some of it is going and spinning the turbo there. You guys can pause here if you want to see some of the specs of the engine. Right there. So that's the starboard generator room, number three and number four. The other side is the same, so we don't need to look at that, just two more of the same. So we'll head down to the next level here like a little mid deck just around the engine this deck here this deck's actually part of the engine flat just a little foam booth there and you got the we saw the fuel auto back flush filters up above this is the servo right over here we'll look at it in a second but first we're going to see this is the forward lower engine room just a little look down there we'll be down there in just a moment okay so here's the servo auto back flush filters. The standby is, of course, in the single containment there. And underneath of all these little covers, there's little candlestick filters. And it auto flushes by itself. In this controller here, you can push the button, and it will tell you how many times it's shot. So we can make sure that it's shooting periodically throughout the day. These are the really high pressure rail pumps here. Super high pressure. Hundreds of bar. Now behind these uh, square doors, which we'll take a look at in just a second, you can see them right there, the square doors. If you look inside, and we did in other videos, you'll see underneath the pistons. You can go and see the lower, like uh, underneath the pistons, the rings and everything else from inside these doors. And like I said in another video, I did show in there. So you can check that out. And that's the lower end of the piston that we saw above. You can see the whole piston rod there, walking up. A little bit bigger than the one in your car, just a little bit. Okay, this is, uh, we're just after the number two air cooler, but this is the blend on board unit, a bob unit we call it. There's two pumps there. Uh, you have suction from a lubel sump and an additive tank. They get blended together to make cylinder oil. So that's what that unit's for. This is the number two air cooler, which is the after one four women's just up here we're going very slow today so it's not really hot usually that's over a hundred easily that's the inlet the air inlet temperature and of course that air is cooled through water and these are the lines right here the inlet and the outlet water goes in and comes back out and that's what cools the air before it goes into the uh, engine the scabber space of the engine and we've looked in there in another video as well. This is the number one air cooler, which is the forward one. And once again here is the inlet temperature, which would normally be plenty above 100. And then the outlet temperature is right there, the big gauge. And it's about 36, but normally it's about 40. So it goes from well over 100 down to 40 degrees. Big temperature drop across that cooler there. 
All right, the next deck down here, we're going to see some uh, coolers, Lubel LT coolers, feed water tank, and there's uh, some cooling water pumps in here. We'll see. But these are the LT jacket water coolers. There are two of those. You have salt water that goes in and out, which cools the jacket water from the main engine. Well, like I said before, in port, when we're not running, you need to keep it warm. That's what that heater upstairs was for. And this is the other cooler here. There are two of them. They're identical. But sometimes you need two. That's why we have two of those. If you're in a really hot place or something, we might need to have two online. These are freshwater cooling pumps right here, these three pumps. Down below you'll see three salt water cooling pumps and the handles on the valves would be uh, a green color indicating that they're salt water. This is your Lubel cooler, main engine Lubel cooler. Same principle, Lubel in and out. And you, you got your water that comes in and goes out cooling the temperature of the Lubel before it returns. This is just the feed water tank over here. And there's a little inspection window. You can make sure it's nothing in there. And it's very clear, so that we're all good there. And it's just the water level right down there. We call that the hot well. And that's just the feed water tank. This is just one of our fire hoses in the engine room. Sometime I'll make a video going around and we'll show fire equipment on the ship, maybe safety equipment, fire equipment. There we go again, another shot of the forward engine room. We're heading down there now, but yeah, that would be another video for another day maybe. We can show uh, some of the fire safety equipment that we have on the ship. Maybe next time I'm back I'll do that. This is the Lubul auto back flush filter. Upstairs we saw the servo and we saw the the fuel oil. This is the Lubul auto back flush filter, which automatically shoots. These are boiler feed water pumps down here for the boiler upstairs that we saw. We're looking at the starboard side of the lower engine with the breathers there. That's the crankcase inside of there. And just recently I uh, made some video where we show inside of there too. I don't know if you guys saw it, but if not, check that video out. These are turbo Lubul pumps for the turbos. So yeah, we showed inside uh, that. That's the lower end of the number two air cooler, the units we saw above, on the deck directly above there. And that's just underneath the side of that. And we're almost at the after end of the engine. You can see the shaft coming out here, the tail end of the engine. And this is the large planetary gear. We've got two big pumps here. We saw the spare one up, up upstairs, remember? These are the main engine Lubo pumps. Now on the other side of that planetary gear, there's a jacking gear it's called. It engages onto that gear. It's a smaller gear, but it engages to this large planetary gear. And there's a controller just across here, right over there, the gray controller. And there's a push button and you can manually turn the engine when you're inside doing an inspection, a ring inspection or something. You can manually turn the engine slowly with the jacking gear, which is right there that motor right there and a the handle. That's what engages the small gear onto the large planetary gear there. And you can control the engine yourself if you're in port doing some maintenance or you need to rotate the engine. And again, we're not going very fast. You saw the wasn't turning very fast. Just under the stair ladder here, there's a couple little pumps. And here's the controller. We have a weather bilge pump and a sludge pump, which is how we pump our sludge overboard once a trip to a barge. The green unit to the left is the oily water separator, also known as the OWS, and it does exactly what the title says, separates the oil from the water. These are just some little lube oil pumps, and you have a lube oil transfer pump here. And you can see the strainers. Of course, on the suction side, there's a filter. And the next two units on the left are the fuel oil transfer pumps for moving fuel oil around. We have two of those identical pumps. There's the controllers and there's the aftermost one right there and a filter which coincidentally I need to clean tomorrow. We're going to do that. And there's the forward one and the filter is to the left with the flat top unit. 
This is the cargo hold bilge stripping pump, which is not there right now. It's up in the workshop getting maintenance. These are fire and general service pumps. There are two of those. We're on the forward port side of the engine room now. These are the reefer cooling pumps, saltwater reefer cooling pumps. We don't need that on this run, but if you're in a hot part of the world, it provides cooling water to your reefer containers. That there are separate lines that can be plugged into those containers in the cargo holds, and it circulates water through the reefer units to keep them cool. If you go like to the Mideast or somewhere, or Dubai, you might need to hook something like that up, but not on this run. We're just going to Europe. And these are the three salt water cooling pumps. And that little deck up there above, we saw the fresh water ones. These are the salt water cooling pumps. That's just a little controller unit for remote operated valves hydraulically. That's just a hydraulic unit to control those valves remotely. This is a starboard main engine C suction. You see the anodes on the top, the three little things there on the top. And there are the spare ones right there. And there is a, also a port main engine seawater suction too, which is right over here. There you go, right there. And there's also three anodes there, and there's three spares also for this one. That's the main sea suction. That's where the salt water comes into the ship from the sea. That's your main water for cooling. So that was the lower interim, guys. We're going to head up. There's a little deck over here just to the right and we're gonna see the other reefer cooling pumps we just saw the three down below these are the other three right here reefer cooling pumps and again that's if you're in a really hot climate somewhere we're not we go back and forth to Europe the reason there are six is because three of them are freshwater three of them are saltwater this is just an electrical storeroom there's a lot of little spare things parts all of our lamps, light bulbs, and stuff are in here. There's some conductor in the back. And uh, just lots of parts in here, electrical stuff. Any kind of light bulb that we use is in this room. And there's the, the controllers, the six controllers for those reefer cooling pumps, the three salt water ones and the three fresh water ones. So all on that board right there. Another look at the engine, forward end. Of course, there's another level of it above where we started the tour. Okay, so we're back here by the turbos. We're going to make our way up to the deck we started on, except for the other side. We didn't see that yet. And we're going to take a look up there. There's not much more to look at. Just looking at one of the turbos here again. Okay, there's an auxiliary blower spare. And we saw the two units. That's just a spare one for that. Temperature in the engine room today is not bad. It's only 32 Celsius. 12% humidity only. So actually that's a cool day for us. Okay, so we're going to walk up these steps here. Take the stair ladder up another deck. Looking at the boiler still. You can see the gauge glasses right over there. This is a low pressure boiler. It's usually about 5 to 6 bar, like 75 to 90 pounds of steam, so that's low pressure. Two green units are working air compressors, and they are what the name says. Just uh, air, working air compressor, air that we use. These three units are the main engine starting air compressors. The engine is started by air, which we talked about in other videos those compressors there and that air goes into these storage unit these are air receivers there's one you can see and there's another one directly behind it same unit there's just two of them and that's uh, the receivers for your starting air it's uh, stored in those bottles the little table you just saw was like where we cut our gaskets if we need to make a gasket there's all kind of material and cutting we keep some spare stuff here like lifting tools straps chain falls, little choker chains there, pad eyes, shackles. This is the after overhead crane. There's one up forward there, you see it? And it runs on a track. 
goes all the way from forward back to the aft end of the engine. That's for lifting heavy stuff like if we do an exhaust valve, cylinder liner, piston. And I use it a lot for moving things around the engine that are heavy. Um, so that's a really good to have. And they're very easy to use. There's the exhaust trump again here. You can see it going up and that just makes its way up to the stack. But yeah, those overhead cranes uh, are really nice to have for moving, uh, you know, a lot of times we get spare parts and stuff, we have to move them around. Obviously you couldn't pick it up, so we need those cranes. Okay, now we're almost done the tour. This is the main AC plant. There are two of them. And that's for our house AC, where we live. That's the air conditioning units. And behind me, it's a cylinder blue wool tank. That's the for the cylinder oil. I pump that up every day on my rounds. And there's a controller for the AC plant. This is just a little air dryer unit. And the name says what it does. It removes the moisture from the air. This is a chlorifier. It's a water heater unit here. There's a heater element right there, you see it. And we're up forward now, looking at the forward crane that we saw from back half a moment ago. And this is the forward one. And it, the cables go down and they're holding onto one of the exhaust valves, which we also saw earlier. Just taking another look at the engine here. The eight cylinder RT5. Guys, okay, so we're back in the control room here. Hope you enjoyed that tour of the engine room. Uh, so this is just the main control board here, all the electrical bus board. These boards here are just for the generators. Generator four, three, we have four of them. This is a computer where we enter all our data, do all our sheets. We have a printer and some other computers that are monitoring things. The firing cycles here, we got the Mapex. These are all of our fuel tanks. Here's the Lingzo system, has everything. You can look up anything on there. Check anything, check the alarms. Some other gauges here. And we can see out in the engine room, we have a screen here with a camera. This is just for, this board here is just for like pumping different cargo hold tanks if they get full. So anyway guys, this is the main control room, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any other questions, please feel free to ask and I'll answer as quickly as I can. Sometimes I'm not around, but I will get back to you guys as soon as I can. So thanks for watching this video. If you guys haven't already liked and subscribed to the channel, please do so. So you can come back the next post we do. And uh, we're going to be posting a lot more videos. So thanks again for watching guys and we will see you on the next video.